When a brake pedal is pressed and the S-cam is turned, the S-cam A. Presses the brake shoes against the inside of the brake drum. B. Tightens the brake drum onto the axle. C. Presses the brake lining against the wheel. A. Presses the brake shoes against the inside of the brake drum. When a brake pedal is pressed and the S-cam is turned, the S-cam presses the brake shoes against the inside of the brake drum. This causes friction and will cause the vehicle to slow. During a static leakage test, what is the maximum leakage rate that is safe for a double combination vehicle? A. 3 psi in 1 minute. B. 6 psi in 1 minute. C. 8 psi in 1 minute. A. 3 psi in 1 minute. When performing a static leakage test on a double combination vehicle with air brakes, the leakage rate should be no more than 3 psi in 1 minute. If the air leaks from the air brake system at a quicker rate, the vehicle should not be driven because something likely needs to be repaired. A visual low pressure warning signal should activate before air pressure drops to a level between A. 55 and 75 psi B. 35 and 50 psi C. 75 and 100 psi A. 55 and 75 psi. A visual low pressure warning signal should activate before air pressure drops to a level between 55 and 75 psi. This signal could be a light, a buzzer, or a wigwag. During an applied leakage test, the maximum leakage rate for a triple combination vehicle is a. 10 psi in a minute. B. 8 psi in a minute. C. 6 psi in a minute. D. 4 psi in a minute. C. 6 psi in a minute. It is important to know the maximum air loss rate that is safe for your specific vehicle. A triple combination should have a leakage rate no higher than 6 psi in a minute during an applied leakage test. The fill in the blank between an air compressor and reservoir tank prevents air from escaping if the air compressor has a leak. A. Slack adjuster. B. One-way check valve. C. Tractor protection valve. B. One-way check valve. A one-way check valve is required to be between an air compressor and the first main reservoir. This valve prevents air from escaping the system if the air compressor develops a leak. If the low pressure warning signal activates while you are driving, you should A. Continue driving normally. B. Exit the road and park as soon as safely possible. C. Stop where you are and park. B. Exit the road and park as soon as safely possible. If the low pressure warning signal activates while you are driving, it is important that you safely exit the roadway as soon as possible and park your vehicle. If the air pressure gets too low, the brakes will no longer work well enough for you to stop safely. Once the air tanks are at an air pressure level of 125 psi, the air compressor governor will a. Stop the compressor from pumping air. b. Release air from the tanks. c. Begin pumping air into the tanks. A. Stop the compressor from pumping air. An air compressor governor will stop the compressor from pumping air once the air tanks are at an air pressure level around 125 psi. This air pressure level is referred to as the cutout level.
When parking, you should not use the parking brake if A. The brakes are very hot. B. The brakes are very cold. C. There is snow on the ground. A. The brakes are very hot. If your brakes are hot after coming down a steep grade, you should not use your parking brake when parking. Let your brakes cool before applying the parking brake or risk damaging the brakes. Vehicles equipped with anti-lock braking systems ABS, have Fill in the blank Malfunction lamps to indicate when the ABS is not working. A. Green. B. Blue. C. Yellow. C. Yellow. Vehicles with ABS have yellow malfunction lamps to alert drivers when the braking systems are not working. Be sure you know where the malfunction lamp on your vehicle is before beginning a trip. Brake linings should be A. Loose B. Free of oil C. Soft B. Free of oil Brake linings should not be loose or soaked with oil or grease. They shouldn't be dangerously thin. Both systems in a dual air brake systems share A. Air tanks B. Hoses. C. An air compressor. C. An air compressor. Both systems in a dual air brake system share a single air compressor. If the air compressor is damaged, neither system will be able to operate properly. You should fill in the blank. If the low pressure warning signal activates while you are driving. A. Stop where you are and park. B. Exit the roadway as soon as safely possible. C. Continue driving normally. B. Exit the roadway as soon as safely possible. If the low pressure warning signal activates while you are driving, it is important that you safely exit the roadway as soon as possible and park your vehicle. If the air pressure gets too low, the brakes will no longer work well enough for you to stop safely. During an applied leakage test, the maximum leakage rate for a double combination vehicle is A. 10 psi in a minute. B. 8 psi in a minute. C. 6 psi in a minute. D. 4 psi in a minute. D. 4 psi in a minute. It is important to know the maximum air loss rate that is safe for your specific vehicle. A double combination vehicle should have a leakage rate no higher than 4 psi in a minute during an applied leakage test. Anti-lock braking systems ABS A. Reduce a vehicle's normal braking capacity. B. Are in addition to other braking systems and do not reduce a vehicle's braking power. C. Are not effective on larger vehicles. B. Are in addition to other braking systems and do not reduce a vehicle's braking power. If equipped, ABS is in addition to a vehicle's normal braking system and does not increase or decrease the braking power of any other system. ABS only activates when a vehicle's wheels are about to lock. What color light indicates a vehicle's ABS is not working? A. Green. B. Blue. C. Yellow. C. Yellow. On vehicles with anti-lock braking systems, ABS, yellow malfunction lamps alert the driver to ABS malfunction. If braking at a speed of 55 miles per hour while driving on dry pavement, the brake lag can add 
Fill in the blank. To your vehicle's total stopping distance. A. 32 feet. B. 15 feet. C. 50 feet. A. 32 feet. The total stopping distance for vehicles equipped with air brakes is made up of four factors, perception distance, reaction distance, brake lag distance, and braking distance. When braking at a speed of 55 miles per hour while driving on dry pavement, the brake lag can add around 32 feet to a vehicle's total stopping distance. While operating on a downgrade, you should brake until you reach a speed that is a. 5 miles per hour below your safe speed b. 10 miles per hour below your safe speed c. 15 miles per hour below your safe speed a. 5 miles per hour below your safe speed while driving downhill, you should hold down the brake pedal until your vehicle reaches a speed 5 miles per hour below your safe speed, then release the brake pedal. Repeat this process. Before driving a vehicle with air brakes, you should ensure that the fill in the blank come on automatically when air pressure falls below 45 psi. A. Spring brakes. B. Parking brakes. C. Air brakes. A. Spring brakes. Before driving a vehicle with air brakes, you should ensure that the spring brakes come on automatically when air tank pressure falls to a level between 20 and 45 psi. You can do this by chalking the wheels and releasing air from the braking system by stepping on and off the brake pedal. Once the pressure levels drop to an unsafe level, the parking brake valve should pop out and spring brakes should come on. To inspect slack adjusters on S-CAM brakes, you need to A. Park on a hill and test the brakes. B. Put on gloves and push in the slack adjusters. C. Chalk the wheels and disengage the parking brake. C. Chalk the wheels and disengage the parking brake. Check each slack adjuster after parking on level ground, setting wheel chocks, and disengaging the parking brake. Pull the slack adjusters to make sure they do not move more than about one inch from where the push rod is attached. If they move more than one inch, they may be out of adjustment and will need to be fixed. When an S-CAM turns inside a brake drum, the S-CAM A. Presses the brake shoes against the inside of the brake drum. B. Presses the brake shoes against the brake linings. C. Presses the brake linings against the wheel axles. A. Presses the brake shoes against the inside of the brake drum. When a brake pedal is pressed and the S-CAM is turned, the S-CAM presses the brake shoes against the inside of the brake drum. This causes friction and will cause the vehicle to slow. In a vehicle with dual parking control valves, a separate air tank can be used. A. To make the air brakes work more effectively. B. To temporarily release the spring brakes. C. To charge the brakes on the rear trailer. B. To temporarily release the spring brakes. In a vehicle with dual parking control valves, there is a separate air tank that can be used to temporarily release the spring brakes if they have been activated due to low air pressure. Pushing in the proper control will release the spring brakes for a short period of time, allowing the driver to move the vehicle in an emergency. Why should you regularly drain the air tanks? A. Because the air gets old and needs to be replaced. B. Because compressed air contains some water and the water collects in the tanks. C. To allow for a change in pressure. 
b. Because compressed air contains some water and the water collects in the tanks. Compressed air usually contains a certain amount of moisture and compressor oil, which can build up in the air storage tanks and damage the brake system. The tanks should be drained to clean out these accumulations. On a tank with a manual drain valve, draining should be performed at the end of each day of driving. On flat surfaces, wheel chocks? A. Can be used to prevent a parked vehicle from moving. B. Make it easier for a parked vehicle to roll. C. Should only be used on the front driver's side tire. A. Can be used to prevent a parked vehicle from moving. In situations where a driver cannot use a parking brake, wheel chocks can be used to hold a parked vehicle in place on a level surface. The air pressure in a dual air brake system should build from 85 to 100 psi within a. 2 minutes. b. 15 seconds. c. 45 seconds. C. 45 seconds. When inspecting a vehicle with a dual air brake system, you should wait for air pressure to build from 85 to 100 psi in both the primary and secondary systems. This should take about 45 seconds. The air compressor is connected to the A. Transmission. B. Engine. C. Radiator. B. Engine. The air compressor of an air brake system is connected to the engine through gears or a V-belt. The compressor may be air-cooled or cooled by the engine cooling system.